Hey everybody, it's Paula here at Bowersville Farm. I know it's been a while and I'm really sorry, but we have been, one number one, healing. Rob, you know, of course, you know, he just located his elbow. So that's been a huge thing. I injured both of my ankles and I'm slowly recovering from that. We've both been doing physical therapy and just, oh, and by the way, there's a wedding that we're planning for December, and time is getting short. <laughs> so, Sarah's getting married December the 4th, so we, we've just had many, many irons in the fire, let's just say, and it's been a bit hectic. Mm -hmm. I bet, I'm sure y'all have felt hectic, hectic times. <laughs> I mean, it's just a bit crazy. So, um, with that in mind... I will say that my husband is in Dallas on business and so I am here by myself and I'm getting ready to go out and feed everybody and so I'm going to take you out because you guess what we have turkeys I mean y'all have missed the whole turkey fiasco we've had so I'll tell you about that later on in the video <laughs> but we do have nine turkeys and they're growing um, did not realize turkeys were so difficult to raise, but as I've said before, we are on a learning journey here at Bowersville, and I guess we'll just continue on learning, but we're excited that we still have nine. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. Okay, so I am getting my scraps together for the pigs, and um, they love table scraps, so I, I try to clean out the refrigerator quite often. and. I'll give you my favorite tip that we've ever gotten for feeding our pigs, and that is if you have a day-old bread store or a bread outlet in the town where you live or in the next town over, we have one that's in, um, I think it's in Lexington or West Columbia or something from us, and we go there, you can get a truckload of um, bread or we get it by the cart full. We get it, or we order a shopping cart full of bread, day old bread. It's bread they can't sell anymore because it's past its prime. We get a shopping cart full for twelve dollars to feed our pigs. It kind of supplements their their feed, and they eat it up. Wait until you see them. <laughs> we only get the uh, shopping cart full because we don't have a place to store a whole truckload. And we only have five pigs, so that just wouldn't work. We keep the bread in the freezer, and we just take a couple loaves out at a time and put them in the bag, in the bucket, and feed them. So let's go do that. <laughs> uh, I'm serving them up some grits, leftover grits I had from this morning, as well as some pasta and spaghetti stuff. And then I'm gonna toss in, or actually, I'm gonna get the bread, and then we're gonna put it outside or take it outside. My camera's sliding down. Y'all okay? Okay. <laughs> Let's see if I can fix that. Okay. Well, y'all are leaning a little bit. Oh, you look better now. Go upright a little bit. Okay, here's good. chicken, I just throw the bones and everything in there because they love it. Now I'll have to split this into two five-gallon buckets because uh, Schnitzel, Big Daddy, he, he's by himself and then I have the five little piglets in another area. They're right next door to each other but you know, we can't have them all together because we're waiting for Petunia, our female, to get a little older before she gets um, put in the same pen with Schnitzel because she's not ready for babies yet. <laughs> okay. 
So this is the deliciousness that I have going on for them. I know y'all getting hungry. But these guys are getting ready to pig out. And then, okay, so we're going to go into this freezer. This is where we just keep all the bread. And as you can see, this is how we keep all the bread. But, I've even got some old jams and jellies in here. They're not frozen. Um, this freezer we call the refrigerator because it does not freeze. I've got to replace a fan in there. <laughs> It freezes like a little bit. So these guys are frozen, but the jellies are not. It's kind of weird. It freezes when it wants to. That's why we keep the bread in here until I can get it fixed. So I'm gonna take three loaves, two for the little guys and one for the big one. So I'm going out first and getting um, Penny's bucket. And I want you to see all these ducks and chickens gathering they know it's time <laughs> there's mr t hey penny miss penny is hungry so we're gonna get penny's bucket hey baby hey sugar you hungry see there's abigail and amelia and mr t these all these Oh, you're gonna get in the way. You want, you want some attention. She gets irritated with the chickens. But here's all the ducks. We have these two guys. And these are our buffs. Then we have all of our fun chickens in the hen house over there. So we gotta take care of everybody today. All right, so you can see the food truck here. I gotta get everything, all these buckets loaded up. So first things first. We're gonna mix up the pig's food, then Penny's food, and then we'll load up the food truck with everything we need to make all of our rounds to get everybody taken care of. Haven't you missed me? I've been, I've missed y'all. <laughs> oh, the bachelors are gathering. They all wanna eat. Okay, so here's, we've got two buckets of the pigs, so. One is for schnitzel, and I'll give him a whole loaf of bread. Sometimes we give him two, it just depends. Then I give the other five pigs another two loaves. Now I gotta get the feed. Actually, no. Really quickly, I'm gonna divide up the leftovers in here. I forgot about that. Ooh wee! Look at that. Sooey, sooey! I like to put a little bit more in the bucket with the five pigs because five of them. Then I'll take this pot in and the dogs like to want to try to get out of here. Are y'all okay? I just dropped you in the scrap bucket. Are you all right? Sorry about that. Okay, so our feed room is a little chaotic and messy right now. I need to get in here and really reevaluate things. Here, here's a quick tour. I'm standing in the middle of a bit of a mess so horse tack and food everywhere so i got to do a little organizing because this is gonna make me crazy hey guys okay we're gonna toss some crumble out to the chicks actually no where is my scratch there it is Two 
some minerals. into the pig's food. So I'm just going to pour this in. Kelp. I mean, not algae, but kelp. This is good for their gut. Just mix it in. First take out. Penny's food has to be mixed with water. It's beet pulp and alfalfa. And we soak it in now. By the time I feed the pig to come back, her food will be ready to go. Water for the chickens out in the pasture. But so far, we're ready to go. 
So start your engines. Take a look. From all of our leftovers out here, we have all these volunteer plants coming up. Looks like squash and tomatoes everywhere. <laughs> look at all the tomatoes. Squash. All those tomatoes. <laughs> these piglets are, and there's, he's even got some um, squash plants happening in his little area. It's almost time to move him. He is about torn this area up. I'm gonna give him some extra corn. They love chicken scratch. Next on the stop, we're going to go straight through there to Miss Penny.
off to the turkeys. So here we are at our turkeys. Did I tell you we actually started out with 18 of these guys? I wish someone had told us that these are really hard to raise. Um, we could have used some tips, I guess. But just like with everything else, I jumped right in because we wanted to have our own turkey for Thanksgiving that we raised, just like we did with our chickens. But um, I started out feeding them the same chick starter that I use with the meat birds which is a big no-no because turkeys need more protein so you need a wild bird feed for uh, turkeys and all of our turkeys ended up dying one by one because they were very stressed and they weren't getting enough protein as babies well that was a really expensive lesson to learn so I've taken lots of notes and we will not be going down that road again. You can see where we've moved them. We started here and then here and now they've progressed here. And uh, this was an old dog pen that Rob made into their uh, turkey shed. And so we're going to, we drag it with the tractor, which we'll do tomorrow. This just gives them a little shade <laughs> from where the sun has in, but you can see they've eaten all the grass. And I have got to get them some more water. They go through more water. We started out with 18, 18 turkeys, and we're down to nine. I had no idea that they would be so weak. Um, I didn't know they were so hard to raise. We didn't have any problems with Tom Turkey, Mr. T. So, um, this has been a huge learning experience like everything else here on the farm. Uh, yeah. So, we'll get to the fat girls out here and collect our eggs and feed them and go back and get some water for these turkey lurkies. What's up? How the ladies doing? All right. These are our hens and one rooster, our Easter eggers and our black Australarps. These are the ones that I have dubbed my fat girls. These are where we collect our eggs and I sell these eggs because they're the pretty ones. But um, these birds along with our meat birds have practically fertilized our entire pasture over the summer in the last year. Um, we move this enclosure every couple of days and so you can see where you know the grass is green on the outside of the fence and on the inside they've really just um, eaten the grass down but they're also pooping and scratching and doing all their chicken things and then when we move them 
the grass just comes back and it's just so lush and thick. It's really been an amazing save for our hay pasture. And also should give a shout out to uh, Joel Salatin and Justin Rhodes because these are the mentors that we had and we read books and we followed along with on YouTube where we learned about this process and we learned about these electric fences that are um, powered by the sun. So um, I can't say enough about these guys. They are awesome. Well, we only collected three eggs. I'm thinking, you know, time's getting ready to change. Oh, we're a little sideways. <laughs> time's getting ready to change. We're gonna have a full moon tomorrow. So things are a little different and it looks like we have some girls that are starting to molt. There's feathers everywhere. So we're not gonna get as much egg production out of my fat girls right now. But, um, I'll just keep feeding them their minerals and extra supplements to help them with their egg production. So, but it's the time of year. This is also my favorite time of day. My favorite time of day. When the sun is beginning to set and all is beginning to get quiet. This is also my favorite part of our property where I can stand back here in the corner of the pasture and just, you know, have a quiet moment. Looks like the bees are getting ready for cooler weather. They're not as busy. They're probably working very hard inside. So we'll probably get out here tomorrow. I need to refill their um, food right there. I put some sugar water out there every couple days and um, just to help them get ready for the upcoming winter. So with the last, I'm doing the last of my chores for the night, which is filling up the water trough for Penny and <laughs> Samson over here. Um, full moon coming up tomorrow, so it's gonna be crazy, <laughs> probably. But um, I don't know if y'all noticed your animals get a little hmm, when there's a full moon. I think everybody's a little extra frisky around here. But thank you for joining us today. I'm, we're glad to be back. Rob will be home tomorrow. He's been in Dallas since Monday. So I'll be glad to have him home. <laughs> um, and we look forward to seeing you next time. And if you haven't already, do subscribe and give us a like. Um, and we'd love to hear from you. So see you later. Until next time.